Duran Premium Cigars, one of the fastest growing boutique cigar companies, providing smokers a portal into the old Cuban tradition of perfect balance and the lost art of progressive flavor construction. Roberto Palayo Duran began his career in tobacco over two decades ago in Havana, where his reputation grew within Cuban circles. The creation of Duran Premium Cigars has given Roberto the platform to introduce a series of cigars that offer the same quality, construction, and detail, which he perfected while in Cuba. Brands include the Ultra Ultra Premium Roberto P. Duran Premium Cigar Series, Azan Cigars, Naya, and Baracoa. Duran Cigars uses a seed to humidor approach as all tobacco is grown on their farms and rolled in their factory in Esteli, Nicaragua. Rollers have been carefully chosen to carry out Roberto's precise method to ensure the progressive flavor in each cigar. Duran Cigars invites you to make their premium your standard. Havana Cigar Club, located in Warwick, Rhode Island, is a great place to enjoy a drink and a cigar. Stogie Geeks listeners can find a $5 off coupon on our website by clicking the HCC logo. To the Stogie Geek Show. This is our Stogies of the Week segment. Very excited. we got some awesome cigars to talk about, Will. Yeah, I, I had a very, very good week. Yeah, I've got some, you know, like you said, well, uh, a lot of uh, fight Chuck Norris. I had two this week, which is I haven't had a Chuck Norris in a while, too. I think I had two as well. Yes. And they weren't what I would ex- They were ones that hit me from left field. Um, I didn't expect these to be at the level they were at when I smoked them. Well, it's interesting, Will, as we've teased uh, in the past, um, in the last show, actually, uh, Kubanicon HR. Yeah. So, Will, give, just give me a, a quick, like, three-sentence background in the series of cigars, because it's not one that we had available in the local shop here in Rhode Island up until recently. Yeah, so the Kubanacan HR was a project that it came out, um, it came out last, the end of, actually, it, was, it made its debut at the um, 2014 IPCPR. And what was significant about that is it was a project that was done in collaboration with uh, Cuban grower Hirochi Robania. Um, so that was a blend he collaborated with um, with uh, Cubana Khan. And uh, it was meant to, it was it actually is an ultra premium cigar um, that was that was released. It got it came out, I'd say it came out really towards the end of last year. So, you know, they started hitting the shelves in, in like mid-December, and they just uh, they they just were very highly acclaimed. It was one of my Oasis cigars. I, I'm one size I really enjoyed. Um, obviously, some folks know that Hirochi Robania and Kubanacan, they've gone separate ways right now. Um, in terms of what the future of that cigar is, we, we don't know. Um, right now, Kubanacan says they're still making it, but mm-hmm. um, until we know otherwise, we'll just assume that that's... That's correct. Um, but it uses a, uh, it's got this Ecuadorian Habano 2000 hybrid wrapper, and it's got a Jalapa binder and old Nicaraguan filler. Now, Will, you really like the sublime size in this blend. I, I did, um, the, which is a six and a half by 54. People I've talked to tend to gravitate to the sublime blend. Um, I guess from talking to you, you, you kind of had a different spin on this one. Yeah, I mean, I thought the Sublime was a good size. Don't get me wrong, it was a good cigar. Uh, but I started experimenting with some of the other sizes as well. And I smoked the uh, Corona size. The Hermoso. The Hermoso. I thought the Hermoso was good. I mean, it was a good, you know, solid kind of fiver cigar for me. Um, but when I smoked the Toro, Will, wow. I could really see what you were talking about in this blend. And rating it the, uh, I believe you rated it a Fight Chuck Norris. Is that correct? Oasis. It's Oasis. Oasis, yeah. Yeah. So for me, the Toro was a Fight Chuck Norris, dude. I mean, this cigar totally sucked me in, had lots of different subtle flavors going on, and I was just smoking it. And, like, all I could think of was smoking, like, wow, I really know what Will is talking about now. Like, I really get this blend, and it's really spectacular. And the other sizes that I smoked, um, the Hermosos and the Sublime, I mean, they were good. Don't get me wrong. It's a great cigar. Um, but the Toro, for me, just really knocked it out of the park and put it at that fight Chuck Norris uh, close to Oasis. I think with with a little bit more time, 
Uh, these just came into Mr. J's on a smoke shop. So I think with a little more time, that Toro is going to be in that Oasis category that you talked about. Because it's such a special blend. And I think one of the things that, or a couple of the components that make for those really highly rated cigars here on the Stoey Geek Show is it has that complexity. It holds your attention. It burns great. It draws great. Um, it, it has great flavor. And to have all those components in one really speaks to the smoking experience um, and kind of sucking you in and making you, you can't do anything but pay attention to the cigar. And that's what the Toro did for me. And I, and I agree the Toro's probably was my second favorite. Um, and it, I'd probably have that as a, as a Chuck Norris cigar. Those are the two <clears throat> sides. I agree with you on the Hermoso. It, it, that one just didn't do it for me. Mm. And it's surprisingly that, you know, we, everyone's, we talk a lot about smaller ring gauges, but here we gravitated to, to the two larger ones, um, on that. And, you know, a lot has to do with personal preference. Not everyone, I'm not saying you're not comfortable smoking a Sublime, but it, you know, not everyone is. Um, and it's, you know, it, it's, that's why I think there's, it's good that a line offers different sizes with that. If you're a Stogie Geeks listener, you have to try this blend. Yeah. I, and like I said, I would, because we just don't know if the, with some uncertainty, that's yeah. all I'm saying. Yeah, I'm not saying, this, I'm not of... saying. <coughs> he, like I said, Kubanakon says the blend's going to continue, but you know, obviously there's some things going on. So we just want to, mm. you know, you, you probably want to try to get your hands on it. That's what, what I'm saying. Absolutely. Yep. Back to you, Will. Um, I know you smoked uh, one of these in the Maduro, but I went and uh, smoked this in the natural. It's the Padron uh, 1926 Siri number 47 TAA cigar. Um, and, you know, the interesting thing about what they did with this this TAA cigar is they took the 1926 blend and um, they went ahead and they put it into a five and a half by 50 box press. Now, if that sounds anything familiar, it's the, a size. It's one of the iconic sizes, I believe, in the 1964 line, which is the, uh, the Exclusivo, mm -hmm. which I, I, I mean, I I will. The exclusive as a cigar, just it's one of my favorite sizes, probably my favorite size in the '64 blend. Um, but it, so in the natural, I I smoked it, and what I'll say about it is, is it better than the 1964 exclusive? No, no, it's not. I'm gonna say it definitely is not better than that. Is it the best size I've had in the 1926 line? No, I mean, I, I'll go to the number nine every time. But that's some pretty high level of competition you're up against in my book. Um, this is still a very good cigar. Um, it's got more sweetness than I come to expect off of a Padron 26. Usually you get more of those spices on the 26. This one's going to have a little more emphasis on the sweetness aspects of it. Um it's overall, like I said, it's a, uh, I, I enjoyed the cigar. Um, I think it was something different for the TAA. I think the TAA, some of this, um, I think some of the cigars, like I said, have been a little underwhelming, but this is, it's different. I think if you are a fan of the 26 blend, um, you, you owe it to try this cigar. It's an $18 cigar. Um, and I gave it a box split. Based <clears throat> and on I'm that. sorry, Will, this was the natural or the Maduro? The natural. Okay, I, I, smoked a, I, I smoked the Maduro. I, is that what you're saying? Yeah, you smoked the Maduro. Okay. Yeah, that I know we talked about a couple weeks ago, um, but I didn't smoke my Maduro yet. And the reason why I didn't smoke the Maduro is, in you know, this time it's starting to get out of the humidity season here now. But um, I usually wait on my on my Maduros. You know, I don't like to smoke a lot of Maduros in the summer, so I kind of I'm waiting on that one. I'll probably have it in the next few weeks. Um, so speaking of Padron, um, I, I didn't review this on the last show, did I? No, you didn't. You okay, teased good, it. Good. I teased it. Uh, this is the Padron 50th anniversary limited edition natural. So this is the one that comes in the big humidor. We talked about the differences in the naming, I believe on the last show. Now, Paul, have you smoked the Maduro I sent you yet? Cause I sent you. No, the I haven't. I okay. Haven't. So. I so, haven't smoked the natural, so I'm kind of curious on it. You know what? This week coming up, <coughs> I'm glad you said that, Will. <clears throat> I'm going to make it a point to smoke the Maduro. 
Okay, I want to hear about the match because I've not smoked. Stogie Santa has got it waiting, but I'm waiting for another cigar to come in before he yeah. it. Yeah, so they, they've got a, a big humidor at Mr. J's yeah. um, where yeah. I bought this one. And uh, I'm like, well, I'm gonna start, I'll start with the natural. I tell you what, the, the spiciness that you get from this cigar, Will, I mean, it's really, um, I don't want to say it's not overpowering, but you definitely get a lot of spice. Like if you like spice in a cigar, this is going to be it for you. I mean, because it's not like a, you know, loaded a, a dish of whatever with a ton of hot sauce kind of spice where you can't take it. Like, it's a nice amount of spice. It lets you know you're there. Like, when you retrohale, you're like, wow, that's a that's a pretty spicy cigar. It does kind of tone down as the cigar goes, uh, you know, kind of burns through. But coupled with that spice is a whole lot of other complex flavors and you get this nice, subtle sweetness. So it's a very good balance, as you know, we say with anything. A good balanced cocktail, a good balanced meal, a good balanced beer. Has to couple some of that spice. For me, you know, this was almost like drinking an IPA, right? It's got that bite from the hops. But a really good IPA will have just enough bite in that hops to kind of wake up your, your senses. But also have some underlying like floral notes and sweetness. And, and that's what this cigar did for me. And it was really awesome to have that smoking experience. Uh, I've always found that the natural wrappers on the Padron, especially in the 26s, have that kind of like spicier component to it. And that's what surprised me about this TAA, how it didn't have, it had more of the sweetness. That's what surprised me about that. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So I rated this a Fight Chuck Norris, dude. This was an awesome cigar. It's another one, again, complexity, commanded your attention, nice sweetness. Some other flavor and components to it, uh, characteristics like spice that really helped kind of hold your <clears throat> hold your attention. Uh, great cigar. The now, price point is really high in this cigar, though. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Now I think Mr. J's has them at a more reasonable price than when They're I like bought mine. Sixty something, right? At Mr. J's, which is actually, <laughs> it's a lot I paid a hundred. I paid a hundred for my my Maduro. Yeah, it's just a lot of money for a cigar. So. Um, I would say if you factor in price, you buy one, right? <laughs> That's, you know, yeah. I, I don't know if I'd go buy a whole bunch more of these at 60, uh, which kind of, you know, the Davidoff uh, Royal Salomones at 50, I probably over time have accumulated three to four of those uh, that I've bought uh, at different times. So that goes to show you how much I like that cigar versus some of these Padrones that are priced around the same mark, I, you know, I don't know if I'd go back, Will, and, and start buying more of these at that price point. For 60 bucks, I can get a lot of other great cigars, you know? Yeah, and and I the other Oasis rating I've thrown this year is on that Maduro. Yeah. Um, now, it is a fantastic cigar, that Maduro. I str- like I said, but I'm not telling people, I you know, hey, go out and spend, you know, I'm not telling. I mean, it's something, I think, if you're a Padron fan, I, you owe it to, like you said, that you can't throw a try one on it because it's it's, no, it's, can't. it's too much. It's but too good of a cigar to, to it's say. It's too good of yeah. a cigar, but, but hey, stand there and fight Chuck Norris for it. Why not? But now, Will, let me ask you this. I'm going to put you on the spot. If you could pick any two of your favorite other Padron cigars in the Family Reserve line, for example, would you rather have two of those or one of these 50th anniversary cigars? Um, right with the Maduro, I'd have that Maduro. That, really? In the, yeah, that was that good a cigar. Um, that was if if someone said give me the forty five and the forty six Maduro in exchange for my Padron fiftieth anniversary Maduro, I'd say no. Interesting. I have yeah. heard of retailers selling full humidors of that Maduro. It, it is a very good cigar. Mm. Um, it, it, it's 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 probably the best Padron I've had. The Maduro. Now I haven't had the natural. I am gonna have it. Um, it. It's 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 that good. That cigar. Now is it I better? Have, is it better than the the Millennium Edition? I haven't had the Millennium. Oh really? Yeah, I haven't had the Millennium. Now Stogie Santa talked me out of buying a Millennium because he thinks they didn't age. Yeah, I you know they're definitely on the downward swing, but it depends on how much you're gonna spend for it. Now I have I have I w- was able to get a couple of more Maduros at a more reasonable price. Um. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's when I sent you yours. I'm going to smoke one before the end of the year, and I want to see what the – I've had them sit in my humidor since March. Mm-hmm. So I want to see where this cigar is with, with almost a year of age on it. Um, where, where I don't know where it's going to fall, but typically we've talked about Padrones or you get them and smoke them. Right. 
you know, in most cases. So there are some that do age, though. <clears throat> Interesting. Back to you, Will. Um, I smoked, uh, you know, we always seem like we talk about this brand a lot, but we both just love this brand. I smoked the Avo XO in the Legato size. Um, so the Avo XO is, I think it's a blend you and I have talked a lot. We love that little Presto that they discontinued. Um, the little cor short Corona, mm -hmm. which was probably my favorite size in that. Um, they introduced the, the Legato is Acura 6x54 Toro. It was introduced at the 2014 show with the old packaging, and it was called the Exo Toro. When they rebranded Avo, they renamed this to the Legato. Mm -hmm. um, and I and I tell you what, um, I was really surprised how this smoked in the Toro. Um, it it's got that milder, creamier profile that um, the Exo is known for. But the bigger ring gauge gave it a little more in the way of complexity, um, where it had it had some more for an avo to have some change ups in there. I, I was a little surprised with that. You know, I got some citrus notes, a little cedar sweet spice in there. Um, you know, it's I'll tell you what, the Presto is really the Presto had some other qualities to it. You know, I think they are different cigars because of the size. But, you know, mm -hmm. the Legato was still an XO through and through. I mean. But I was really surprised with this. I gave it a, a, you know, these aren't cheap cigars, by the way, the XOs. They're 1050, but I gave it a box split. I thought it was, I thought it was solid. It's, it's a mild cigar, but very enjoyable on that side. I was surprised how it smoked. <clears throat> yeah, we've talked about that blend a lot. I want to try yeah. it in this size now that you say that. Yeah, we, we'll have to convince Scott to bring back the, uh, we still got to work on him with that. That Presto size, I know. <laughs> oh, I wish they'd bring it. You know, they... You know that that and the the little Davidoff Nicaragua are the two best short smokes I've had. Mm -hmm. Um, <clears throat> I smoked one from uh, EPC. We haven't talked about EPC, I think, in uh, a little while. So uh, I was I was glad when you sent me this La Historia, which is a a blend that I'm a huge fan of. I really I, like. I want to hear. Is this the, is this the, uh, the 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 box press? Yeah. What's that no. size? What's that size called? I thought it was a limited edition, but you said it was a line extension and it's in regular so, production. Regalias de Silla. Oh, I'm glad you said it. <laughs> but it's a box press torpedo. Yep, a big box press torpedo. Yeah, it's like a 60 ring box press torpedo. I think it's, right? like, I think it's like a 58. Yeah, 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 yeah. It kind of feels like that 58, 60 ring box press torpedo, which is a cool size. I really, I really like that uh, that size. Uh, actually, to be honest with you, the box press does great in those larger ring gauges, in my opinion. Uh, it was in Avo, um, the new Avo. Uh, the Nicaraguan blend, right? Yeah. That had that 60 ring box pressed. Yep. Uh, LFD has done great with that 60 ring, 58, 60 ring box press size. Uh, this is cool because, uh, you know, having that torpedo box press, not too many cigars have that torpedo box press, Will. No. I mean, I'm thinking Nesta Añe Miranda did one. Añejo, uh, Añejo makes the shark. Yeah, and you know, that's yep. That they do that. Um, not too many. Not too many others. It's hard to think of a box press torpedo like that. Yeah, I mean, just yeah. Uh, but this the cigar was great. It had those great sweet flavors. It smoked awesome. The burn drawn construction was flawless, which really made the flavors come out. Just the, the way the cigar burned uh, because of that box press and the torpedo. Just it all kind of melded together. Awesome, awesome smokes. I I would call it box worthy. I, I would agree with you on that, um, and I'll even go a step further. I think it's the bell of the ball. I think it's the best one I've had in that line. I agree. I've sampled a couple from that line, and I, I would. I bought a box of a different size. I don't remember which one, but I would, uh, you know, when those run out, I want to buy a box of these for sure. Yeah, the E3, which was almost like a double a double Corona, yeah. almost uh, that was the one that got the rating. But I would take this. I would take this box press torpedo over the E3. I, I think it's a, I, I was real surprised how well that smoked. I didn't ex, it was again I didn't expect it. Box press torpedo, you know, big ring gauge. I and, and aside from the cigar aficionado rating, this cigar did not. Some people did not rate this cigar well at all, and I I didn't understand it. No, no, they didn't. You know, it seemed like they lost a little momentum with that cigar this year too. Um, in the second half, I mean. You know, some of the cigars that got the you know top top three ratings usually hold the momentum, and I don't know if it's just that it was the size that maybe turned some people off, but it's a very good cigar. I agree. I think you should revisit this blend. 
Yeah, I think if you're, especially we, there's a lot of folks who do like San Andreas, and you know, I'm not the. This is one that I I think worked well with the San Andreas. I agree. Back to you, Will. Um, this was a I, this is a cigar from Christoph that I had. Um, and it's called the Christoph um reserve. Sorry, Christoph Classic Reserva, and I smoked it in the Toro size. Um, now this is a limited run that was done by Glenn Case in three sizes. Um, and it was originally released for the TAA earlier in the year. And it now, then at the show, they kind of opened up whatever they had remaining with it. It's like a, they did a thousand boxes in each of the three sizes. Um, it's a cigar he's making down at PDR cigars. Mm -hmm. And it's one of those Christophs. It's kind of like those Gallerone cigars where it doesn't have the rustic Christoph look, which I think has a lot of charm to it. It but does, this has, yeah. This, this has more of that glossy, sleek look to it, um, which it's a different model. I, I, do, I really do like, you know, the loose, the loose leaves and the, the rough bands. And, you know, I, I like that about Christoph. Um, that being said, this cigar was great. Um, I really enjoyed this cigar a lot of great sweetness some caramel notes some uh, a little bit of that graham cracker taste to it natural tobacco um there was a creaminess on this cigar that, that kept it very smooth um now this cigar had about six months of age when i smoked it because i picked these up when they came to the ta i just never got around to smoking it so they they had some age on it too um this was one of the best christophs i've had and I, like I said, I didn't expect. I like I like a lot of Christophs too. Um, very very much enjoyed this cigar. It's it's priced very reasonable, eight fifty. Um, you know, Glenn, Glenn's Glenn's price points are a little higher, but they're they, they're quality stuff. This is a box worthy cigar. I, <clears throat> this was this is one of the best Christophs I've had, and definitely one of the best Christophs I've had in a couple of years. So it's really good. I smoked this one today, Will. Because I saw that you had reviewed the cigar, and I remember uh -huh. you said that it was really good. Um, I would say it's probably a box split in my book. It's definitely uh -huh. something for eight fifty. I would revisit and smoke again. It seemed to me like the strength and body of this cigar and the flavors make it a very versatile cigar where I could smoke it earlier in the day or later on at, at night, and it would hold up and pair with a lot of things. So I think it has that going for it, and that definitely I could see that reflecting in your rating as as <coughs> excuse me as box worthy. For me right now, it's a box split. I think they just came in next door, so I would imagine they need to sit for a little while, um, and my rating will probably improve over time, but I think the cigar has great potential. Uh, and again, very versatile cigar. Yeah, it, it, that's a key word. It's very versatile. Um, but, you know, a box split, again, is a very good rating by us. Mm -hmm. So we're, you know, we're not, you know, we're not uh, serpent divided here, so to speak. Yeah, I think we're both in agreement about that. Yeah. Too, I will. Um, I smoked an El Vicarious. I sent you that one. Yeah, today. can you elaborate on this one? Um, <laughs> uh, give me a minute. <laughs> yeah, it was a, a I, torpedo shaped cigar. It had a blue and gold uh, label on it. Yeah, I gotta pull up my notes on that one. It's been a while since I smoked it. Yeah, so. the ones that you sent me, I like. We for, I kind of smoked them blind. Like I don't, I don't do yeah. a whole ton of yeah, research okay. on them. Yeah, which uh, so which color band did you have? It was blue and gold. It was, okay, so that's their blue label one. It's made by a company called Trey J Cigars, um, and uh, what they're using on that one is it's a Corojo wrapper, um, Dominican Olor binder, and then they got an interesting filler combination of um, Dominican, Honduran, and Colombian. Now, what I'll say about the company is they have four lines. Okay. White label, blue label, black label, and then they have one called Invictus. And what I'll say about the Invictus, Jose Blanco blended that Invictus. Oh, interesting. So, um, and I do have an Invictus, but I have not smoked it yet. So, okay. um, obviously, if Jose Blanco is blending a cigar for these guys, mm -hmm. um, I have not smoked the blue label yet. And what's, did you smoke the Torpedo? Yep. Yeah, that's, that's the only size I have in that. Good cigar. I tell you what, um, the first two thirds were actually really good for me. Um, had some great flavors, very smooth, you know, not a whole lot of characteristics that, you know, went way off the charts, right? Like it didn't have a ton of spice, a ton of pepper, or 
uh, and it was by no means bland. It had a great flavor on those first two thirds. It kind of fizzled out for me in the last third, which I think really affected the rating for this cigar, unfortunately. Um, had it <clears throat> the final third held up to those first two thirds, it would have been rated much higher in my book. Um, but I gave it a fiver. I thought it was a good cigar, Will. Yeah, I smoked their Maduro, which is the black label, and that's probably where I put that. Yep. Um, yeah, they're nice guys. I met them in Chattanooga, actually. That's where I got those cigars. Nice. Yep. Back to you, Will. Um, all right, so this is the first of my two Chuck Norris ratings. Um, and, and this one was, I didn't expect this one at all. Um, but this cigar is one of these. I smoked several of these. Um, I'm gonna, I have another one to send you. I, um, I smoked a cigar called um, The Art of Power. And it's made by a company called Philippe Gregorio. Mm -hmm. um, Philippe Gregorio, they've been around forever. Uh, it's Phil Wynn's company. Um, he's based in the Virginia area, so he's a you know it's a brand that's done well in the Mid Atlantic. He's he's kind of an out of the box kind of guy. He does some interesting types of things, and some of his stuff's been good, and some of it's not has been a miss for me. Um, he had this line called the the Art of Power about ten years ago, and it was a it was a blend that he did these kind of artesian style um figurados on and they kind of have one has like leopard spots on it but i guess for whatever reasons he decided to re-blend that cigar and come up with a whole new blend um for art of power so he's doing more traditional parejo rounded cigars with this thing right now um he he makes his cigars in a lot of different places. He's been doing some stuff in Costa Rica for the last couple of years, but he went to the Dominican to do the cigar. It, you know, when I looked at the blend, it wasn't anything that really stood out. Um, it was kind of a, I looked at it, I'm like, okay, it's a Ecuadorian Habano wrapper, Peloto Cabona binder, um, Peloto Cabano in the, in the filler with some Condega Lajero and some Criollo 92. Nothing that was really going to surprise me on it. I smoked this size called the Lord Byron, which is a six by 48. So it's kind of like a short Churchill, large Corona Gorda size. Um, they have another, I smoked another size. I don't think the other size was as good as this one. This thing was an absolute flavor bomb, Paul. I mean, hmm. it had, and now I'm going to disclaim this. When I, when I was researching this cigar before I smoked it, they talked about this salted caramel note. And, you know, and I talk about this a lot. That could sometimes influence the way you smoke a cigar when you know that, right? It, at least with me, it, the power suggestion can come into play. Mm -hmm. I got that note. I didn't get it on the 5 by 55 as much as I got it on the 6 by 58 <laughs> But it had um, notes of dark chocolate in this thing. That salted caramel taste was in it. It was some nut flavors. Um, it it just, the, the flavors just kept coming with this thing. Um, it was uh, a little bit, you know, it was a cigar I would say was medium for the most part, it kind of both strength and body goes medium to full at the end. Um, I didn't. Ex this is one of these surprise cigars I've had this year. Um, I would definitely, if you're looking for something different, check this cigar out. It's a Chuck Norris cigar. It's twelve dollars, so it's not cheap, but it's not gonna break the bank either. But I was, I said, real, real. You know, and interesting when I put that review up, some people have come back to me, including the, the Elogio people, who, who were like, they love that cigar. So, mm, you know, it, so you started here. You know, obviously some people have smoked this thing. And it, it, all I can say is that it did some level of validation. Because sometimes when you smoke an, an off-the-grid cigar, it's that good. You wonder. And, you know, it's like, is it you? You know, but mm -hmm. a lot of people really like this cigar. Um, and I said, it's definitely one worth checking out. Um, they have a list of retailers on their site if folks are interested in where to get it. They sent me this cigar, um, and I'm very thankful they did. <clears throat> cool. Yeah. Uh, I went back and I smoked the the Windwood. Uh, you, you obviously remember this one, Will? Have the you original Honduran? The original yeah. Honduran. Have you smoked any of those recently? Not recently. You know, when they came out, they didn't. It didn't light me on fire. It was a. I don't dislike Honduran Connecticut's at all. Um. These aren't Connecticut. Wait. Did you, so you didn't smoke the Windwood? Which one would you smoke then? It, all right. There's was a, one of the unbanded? Yeah, there's a no. There's a lot of cigars in the Windwood. Uh, oh, okay, yeah, bar. you're right. Yeah. yeah. And this is uh, this was the Windwood, you know, factory fresh. 
right? That's what I said, yep. And uh, there was a lot of different blends in this line. And so if you go to uh, Winwood, right? Hold on. Uh, so you're talking about the Winwood Honduras? Yeah, the Winwood Honduras was the one I was thinking of. So sorry, I smoked the Winwood from the factory fresh line. Okay. Um, which it doesn't it doesn't tell me here the the differences. I I wrote these up recently. Hold on, I'm gonna find it. Uh, but yeah, there were there were differences. There was the La Granada, the Route, and um, yeah, their website doesn't list them out anymore. Well, Winwood, yeah, I don't know. You know that kind of I don't know. I think that brand's kind of gone. <clears throat> yeah, La Granada was the one that I that I smoked. And I don't remember what the um what the blend mixture. So it was a La Granada, the route, and there was one other one. Hold on. I'm gonna tell you what they were, because it's uh it's it's interesting. Okay, maybe. Yeah, they made that's they made these. What they were doing with these, they made them um, actually in Miami too. Um, yes. And what they have, I have the blend here. Um, Do you have the blend? Okay, because there's yeah. a different mixture of Lajero in all yeah. of these different uh, blends. Yeah, it, it had um, it had Corojo wrapper, Corojo binder, and then it had Lajero, Habano, and Pelo de Oro. And mm. Caldwell did on. I remember on the packaging with that now. There's percentages that the yes. like that's what he does in his. He breaks it, down the percentages. Which and I the love percentages were on the box. Was the Granada the seventy percent Lajero? Yes. Okay. That's the one. Yeah, I'm looking at it now. So and, the, a, and I've smoked some of the other ones recently too. So when these came out, right? Like the whole thing was where they were factory fresh, and like you said, you're like, eh, they were kind of okay when they came out. However, these have been sitting for a couple of years now, dude. And especially the La Granada because it's seventy percent Lajero is aging wonderfully. It's awesome. It's awesome. It was a really, really good smoke, Will. Um, so I encourage you. Now, I gave it a fiver in this particular size. I think the short Robusto is smoking a little better. I've heard some feedback on the short Robusto uh, or the Robusto size they have in the La Granada. And you can just tell by sniffing the foot of those cigars, I was, I was like, wow, that smells like wonderful sweet aroma come from these cigars now. Um, cause I think it just took time to age, right? Like his the whole concept was you smoke them when you first get them and it's like they're factory fresh, but <coughs> you got to let these things age. And if you can find some now that have been aging for a while, I tell you what, they're pretty awesome. There's a shop I'm going to be going to next Wednesday that I think has these. I'm going to check, check it out. I know they put a, <coughs> they bought a lot of them when they came in and, you know, I go back to what Christian Aroa told us. I think it was a good concept that just maybe it wasn't a concept that was ready for um, ready for its time. Yeah, you know, my my recommendation is to check out the La Granada. That's the Corona, right? Well, no, the La Granada um, I think is the Corona. Well, there was different blends, right? The different percentages, right? And I want to say La Granada was the blend that had that 70% Lajero in it. No, it definitely is. I'm looking at the blend. Yeah, I have a, and there's I have different a... sizes in the La Granada. Okay, so there would... Yeah, that I wasn't sure of. Yeah, I I get confused because sometimes the sizes and the different blends kind of blur in my head. Um, maybe on the it, next show, I'll break it that down had, for people. Yeah, now I'm, that had the band that had the splattered paint on it. It, it has a red band on the foot. Yeah, it has a red band, but I think yeah. it has like... It has like a, a Caldwell type fish band that art already. I remember it had As, yeah. The artwork is absolutely gorgeous. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So I've got the I've got the blend right here. Actually, did you see this? So this is uh, Honduran Honduran Corojo, then Honduran Habano Lajero and Pele de Oro, all from so it's a Honduran Puro. Awesome. They're smoking great now. Try them now. I'm telling you what, you'd be surprised. So. Yeah, like I said, I'm going to be heading to a store next Wednesday if I'm in that area. I should be able to, if they yeah, have them. Yeah, especially so. if you can find that <clears throat> La Granada blend in the 70% Lajero in that short Robusto size well. Pick one of those up and sniff the foot. I'm telling you, you're going to be like, whoa, what's going on there? Yeah. <clears throat> Did you have any more cigars, Will? Yeah, I got one more. Okay, go ahead. Um, This is my other Chuck Norris. Uh, Florida Silva, uh, the Maduro Toro. So they just introduced the Toro size in this. Mm -hmm. I've always loved that Maduro blend. 
I, I think it's the best blend they have in the, in the, the Maya Silva line. Uh, the Florida Silver Maduro is is a home run, is all I can tell you. Um, again, you want to talk about flavor bomb. It, 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 you know, this cigar, if you, it had everything I like in a Maduro. Um, it had mocha. It had it had it had this creaminess that almost was like unsweetened marshmallow. It was a it was a thick creaminess I had in there. Uh, some neat some nuts, some cedar notes in there. Um, it did a lot of different changeups, like the mocha. It changes to a rich coffee note. Um, this cigar started out medium to full in strength and body, and in the last third, the strength just and I this happened. These the strength just ramps up, mm-hmm. and it just hits you. It sneak. It's we want to talk about strength sneaking up on it. It hits you. Um, now I I hear a lot of people talk how they don't like stronger Maduros. I do. Um. And that's why I think I like this cigar. It's got, you know, it's got some oomph to it. Um, but overall, I mean, it was, I don't know if it was Oasis. I don't think it was quite Oasis, you know. But Chuck Norris, yeah, I mean, this is this is probably one of the best Maduros I've had so far this year. I I, I was real, again, I didn't expect this cigar, real super pleased with that cigar. Um, I had smoked one of these cigars at the trade show. Um, and it was very good. It was probably like a box split to box worthy, you know, and I had that on a clean palate. Mm. This cigar with three months of age on it is just at another mm. level. Florida so this Silver cigar, makes awesome cigars, too. They, they do. This Maduro, and I, I, this Maduro, I really, really, this is the best mm. cigar I've had from them. It's really good. You had sent me a bunch of samples from them because I can't yeah. buy them here locally. And, uh, I smoked all of them, every single one of them, dude. And yeah. then when they're gone, I was like, oh, I, get, I, I have to get some more of those now that you say that. Well, yeah, I have to, I have to get some of the Lanceros for you. Um, the Lancero is very good as well. They did a Habano, uh, which is good, for their 20th anniversary. Um, so I thought that was a really good cigar. Nice. The last one on my list was a, a gift from Dave Garofalo from Two Guys Shmo- Sm- Smoke Shop. Two Guys <laughs> Smoke Shop. <laughs> Uh, in Salem, New Hampshire, <clears throat> also the uh, creator of uh, the Cigar Authority show. And uh, this was a, a Hanky Kellner special release. And, and, you know, Jared was telling me the history behind the cigar. I have to ask him again or ask Dave. Um, it, it was something that, that Hanky Kellner kind of gave out uh, to certain people or for some event or something. I don't remember the whole history behind it. Um, but it's a, a Connecticut shade cigar. Very, very mild. I'm sure it's got some age on it. Um, but this one had some awesome, subtle flavors. Like, if I could smoke one of these every morning, I probably would, Will, because it's just mild cigar. Was it the Garofalo? No, this was not That's the a... Garofalo. I okay. did, I will review the Garofalo next week. Okay. I did smoke one of those as no, well. No, Perdomo did the Garofalo. Perdomo yeah. did the Garofalo. Yeah. This cigar is uh, unbelievable. Box-worthy would smoke it every morning. Unbelievable cigar. Wow. And again, it's not one that like you could go buy or anything like that. I don't want to spend too much time talking about it, but yeah. Kind of really cool cigar. Thanks to Dave for for gifting this to me and, and let me try it and uh, you know be a, be a part of this very special uh, cigar. So we'll have to when we have Dave on the show we'll have to ask him more about. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna have we're gonna invite Dave on the show. If you're listening, Dave, you're gonna get an invite. That's right. I know I know Dave listens. So absolutely. <laughs> yeah. This was a great. Uh, it just, it was one that you could smoke every morning with coffee. Yeah, I mean, he's got some interesting projects. Um, I'm constantly hearing about a lot of projects he's got going on. It's just good stuff that's coming out of there. Absolutely. Yeah. Cool. Will, uh, contests. Before, before we get to contests, um, I just want to run down some quick events, and I'll go real quick with these because we had a lot of sponsors come. Jack Tarano is going to be a famous smoke shop on October 9th. Raphael Nodell is going to a boutique blend is going to be a Davidoff of, Maris, a Davidoff of Madison Avenue, October 9th. That's tomorrow. So you guys are in the area. Roberto Duran is doing a, a series of events uh, in the Midwest. Roberto Duran himself, uh, not the boxer, Roberto Palayo Duran. Uh, he's at Blend Cigar Bar in Indianapolis on November 4th. He's at Bluegrass Cigar Suite in Cincinnati on November 5th. And he's at Jungle Gyms in Cincinnati on um, November Excuse me, Jungle Gyms in Eastgate on November 6th. And then not to forget Phil Zengi, um, he's got two events in California 
he's at Tobacco Republic in Loomis on October 14th, and he's at Cigar Monkey in Merced on October 16th. Cool. So, contest. Yes, um, let's do it. Okay. First, want to remind everyone, um, voicemail for Stogie Geeks. I'm going to offer some prizes for the best voicemail. I'll announce those prizes shortly um, in the future, but... Leave us a voicemail, 781-437-7833. And it's on our Facebook page if you if you missed that number. It's 781-437-7833. Just leave us a voicemail. We're going to play that on the anniversary show. What was that number again, Will? 781-437-7833. Puff. 781-437-PUFF. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Got it. All right. Let's do so, some contests. So how do you want you want I have five things from Santana. Um we could we could do three questions again and we pick five, uh, you know, we pick them out that way. Yeah, or do you want to do one one question and pick five people? Um we could do that. Okay. Okay, so we'll do one question and pick five people. Um and what it will be is the first answer right will get so let's kind of we'll go in reverse order how does that sound okay of, of, of the prizes um so first up we have two of these presidential four packs by de Crassier, um and of the diplomacy series now i want to open one of these up because again you talk about packaging yeah, his packaging is outstanding four, you get four coffin cigars okay really? that's cool four coffin cigars I mean, you guys, I hope we can see it on the camera. Wow. I mean, so the, cool. yeah, so we have two of these to give away. So these will be prizes four and five. And you get a, there's four coffin, there's four cigars, each in a different size. So those are going to be the fourth and fifth prizes. Um, the third prize, I have a five pack of the Lanceros. Nice. Okay. So you'll get a five pack of Santana's Lancero that we talked about. Second prize, the Florida Crassier can, sealed, um, and you get a. Uh, you so get 20, a full, 20 cigars in there. Twenty cigars. It's the Corona Gordas. Nice. So, and the grand prize is this is a cigar I like. We actually didn't really talk about this. This is his. Um, Golden blend, aged ten years. Wow! And I'm not going to open the box because it's got his yeah the seal on it. seal, and I want to keep it like that. So, five prizes we're giving away tonight. That's awesome. We want to do, want to do one question. We said yeah, I'm going to do one question. You ready? Yeah, you you can pick the question. Okay. Go ahead. <clears throat> Santana mentioned a specific Cohiba cigar. What size of that Cohiba cigar was Santana talking about in his interview? Now here's the deal, guys. If if we don't get five, they're going back in the pot, <laughs> and it. I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do it next year. So this is only, I can I promise this for the live audience for people stuck in here. So that's right. So, so they'll go back in the pot if we don't get five. What size Cohiba cigar did Santana mention in his interview? Send an email to the show at StoeyGeeks.com. The first five people win fabulous prizes, yep. boxes and, and cans of cigars, dude. That's yep. awesome. And we have our Stogie Geeks prize pack as well. Yes, we do. In fact, I have it right here. This is an A.J. Fernandez prize pack, um, some San Latano Bull, and some A.J. Fernandez New World, all in the box-pressed Robusto size. Wow. It's five of each, so there's ten cigars. Uh, yeah, it's it's, and, and a T-shirt, too. Uh, and a T-shirt, so a Geek Smoke Naked T-shirt comes with that as well. Will, what's yeah. the question for that one? Well, I think we should uh, do you want to do one based on the Hammer and Sickle interview. Okay. Um. Let's see. Oh. Go ahead. You go. What, yeah. What kind of wheat do they use? What was the, the term or the uh, style of wheat do they Great. use to make their vodka? Great question. So send us the correct answer to that one, and you will qualify to win the AJ Fernandez 10-pack of both San Latano Bull and uh, New World. Awesome. Um, and then I just want to say one word about next week because we have a huge guest next week. Jose Sejas. Nice. Matilde Cigars is coming back. Oh, yeah. And, those cigars are good. 
the way to try to score it. That was the best cigar I had at the show in my book. Really? Um, in, that was the one that made the biggest. Now, there's a lot of great cigars I've had since then, but th- but that still stands above. So, and this guy's got a lot of history in the business. I mean, nice. so this is going to be a really good segment. Cool. Awesome. Well, thanks everyone for listening, and we'll see you on the next edition of the Stogie Geek Show.